Thank you for attending today's webinar, Empowering Your OSS Test Capability, sponsored by Viavi Solutions, with participation from Windstream. Before we begin, I wanted to cover a few housekeeping items. On the right-hand side of your screen is the Q&A. If you have any questions during the webcast, you can type your question into the Q&A box and submit your questions to our speakers. All questions will be saved, so if we don't get to answer you, we may follow up via email. At the bottom of your audience console are multiple application widgets you can use. If you have any technical difficulties, please click on the yellow help widget. Here you can find answers to common questions. A copy of today's slide deck is available for download on the green resource list widget. Towards the end of today's presentation, we'll ask for your feedback. A survey will pop open on your screen and will only take one minute to complete. Your feedback is extremely helpful. An on-demand version of this webcast will be av available about one day after the event and can be accessed using the same audience link that was sent to you earlier today. I would now like to turn the event over to Light Reading Senior Editor Brian Santo. Brian? Good morning and welcome to Empowering Your OSS Test Capability, sponsored by Viavi. My name is Brian Santo. I'm the Senior Editor with, with Light Reading, and I'll be your moderator for today's webinar. One of the biggest transformations in, in networking history is underway. It's still early in the trend toward virtualization, uh, and it's thoroughly unclear how to fully virtualize, and yet it's deep enough into the trend to be certain that virtualization is inevitable. Test and measurement companies are on the front lines of the virtualization trend. After all, if you can't experiment with virtualization, you can't tell if your experiment worked or not. You need to know if the physical elements work, if the virtual elements are doing the job, and if the network behaves the way it's supposed to. Now, when talking about behavior, that certainly includes measuring quality of service. To that end, T&M companies have been blurring the lines between test monitoring and insurance. Blurring those lines also happens to blur the lines between design, maintenance, even operations. The stages of designing a network, spinning it up, maintaining it, and running it are becoming less discrete processes and more of a continuum. As T&M companies work to enable virtualization, they're creating tool suites that are extracting data from networks that can be used right away to improve quality of service. This is part of empowering your OSS test capability. As my colleagues at Heavy Reading know, in a recent report they've released on the intersection of test and virtualization, Widely deployed virtual probes can bring new insights across more of the network and deeper through the stack than in the past. Not only is a network operator improving its quality of service by bridging assurance and OSS, it is automatically taking a critical preparatory step for an eventual migration to virtualization, uh, to software-defined networking, SDN, and network function virtualization, NFV. Today we'll hear about the rationale for integrating an assurance solution into a real-time network OSS view sooner rather than later, and then dive into some of the details that any operator who wants to pursue this path should know. Our speakers today are Mike Hoyt, Senior Vice President of Internet Protocol Engineering at Windstream, and Michael McCallan, PLM Director for Virtualized Intelligence at Viavi Solutions. Now, you can trust me, these guys know what they're talking about, and if you don't trust me on that, you can read about their qualifications in their bios on the registration page for this webinar. Uh, and it is now time for our experts to take over. I'd like to hand the microphone over to Mike Hoyt from Windstream. Mike? Thank you, Brian. Uh, <clears throat> and uh, thank you to Light Reading and Brian for uh, uh, having a Windstream participate in this, as well as Viavi. And thank you um, for the audience. Uh, members uh, joining this morning. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here. Um, as Brian mentioned, I, I am Mike Hoyt. I'm the Senior Vice President of, of IP and VOI. I happen to have voice engineering as well here at Windstream um, and have been with the company for um, several years now, coming up on three years. You can read my background in the bio there. Um, <clears throat> I'm going to start with discussing what, what, what challenges and, and the problem statements that Windstream faced um, with regards to performance monitoring and, and testing capabilities, um, primarily, uh, again, focus all around our IP uh, MPLS uh, nationwide uh, network. Um, 
the main statement there, you can obviously um, on the slide you can see this, is that you know we, we required at Windstream where we needed a unified, single, and robust performance monitoring platform for our nationwide IP network. Um, like many telecom companies, we're a conglomeration of eight plus acquired companies and those companies that acquired companies. So as you can imagine, um, we had several different solutions um, from the various companies. Um, they were all separate, different. Um, you know, every time we had a customer issue, uh, troubleshooting, or you know, uh, service delivery, um, it was always having to go to one system or another. So very inefficient. Um, it wasn't seamless, and it, and it also um, it <coughs> was based on um, what many of you are probably familiar with. You know, legacy type of uh, technologies using typical ping, et cetera. Um, so we we desired to build something new, and um, one of the things that we, one of the other challenges that we identified is you know our network as we integrated our IP network, uh, which we did. You know, we we consolidated 14 plus autonomous system numbers into one, um, made our network look like a, a greenfield, and you'll see an example of that shortly. What the network looks like. Um, we, you know, we have over 5,000 unique uh, POPs from an IP perspective, and some of those are just routers on a stick, if you will. Um, but we do have a lot, and that meant a very complex network, and you know, much more difficult to manage. And we needed a, a better performance monitoring and troubleshooting tool to do all of that. We had le we had no less than four disparate performance monitoring systems, you know, um, all running some type of SLA manager or various type of homegrown things all based on older um, technology, and some of them actually were vendor specific. So we, we desired to get rid of those. Um, so some of the, uh, that's the problem statement, and some of the, the benefits that we really wanted to gain out of this new unified uh, performance monitoring and test platform is we really desired the, the, to reduce our truck rolls, right? The number of times our, our field techs had to go out with a, with a handset and, and do some end-to-end -end, um, bookend testing or something similar. We really wanted to reduce that with a centralized test platform um, and automation. I'll speak about that a little bit more in a second. Uh, that was one key driver. Um, we wanted to simplify troubleshooting uh, for our service delivery organization, not only when they turn up new service, um, as well as for our repair centers and our NOC and, of course, for our field personnel. And that was the other objective, one of the other objectives. Um, another objective, and a, and a third objective, I should say, was that we, we, we desired to employ increased automation for our service, um, for service delivery via SDN. Um, and, you know, in our model at Windstream here, uh, we believe that uh, our foray, I should say, into SDN begins with how can we uh, automate some of the customer service delivery and customer portal type functions um, right off the gate um, to make our customer experience much more efficient and automated and self-serving, frankly, um, self-service. So, so that was the other key with the system. Um, and, and to help our repair centers, and again, as I mentioned, ultimately our customers via the portal have a unified view uh, and, and a single um, portal and not have, again, the legacy company view. Um, and, and the key to all of this and the last bullet point on the slide is what we wanted is we didn't want this to be piece parts, right? We didn't want one, one tool out there doing performance monitoring, another tool for troubleshooting, you know, and feeding an a, uh, a portal via an API call. We, we desired a solution that would, would take care of the performance monitoring piece that would leverage this, we could leverage the same system to provide a centralized testing platform for troubleshooting and new service instantiation, basically what we call birth certificate, right? Validating um, that service for a customer. So with that, um, talking about uh, some of the, uh, what we did and some of the uh, performance modernization that we completed in 2016 this year and what our 2017 strategy is. Um, one of the benefits, uh, once we rolled this out, and you'll see some details on that in a second, um, uh, the modernization of our performance monitoring platform really produced a, a significant uh, visibility for our network at several layers. At our transport layer, we, we saw increased efficiency towards identifying fiber cuts. Uh, we were able to, because of the, uh, the, the performance monitoring, again, you'll see that in a second, the views that we have, we were able to better correlate in our NOCs um, 
those fiber events that happened with how they impacted the IP MPLS network and subsequently the VoIP network, which is an overlay, of course, utilizing the IP, IP MPLS network. Um, we, we got the unified um, and more efficient measurements of latency loss and jitter for our IP network, getting rid of those four systems that we had, and we now have a single unified system, um, and we, we gained the efficiencies there. And then, of course, on voice, um, now that we have these additional measurements with this next-gen performance monitoring system, uh, we again had a unified uh, platform, and we could we could uh, get more efficient measurements uh, for, for MOS scores and, and RTP call flow, et cetera. Some of our uh, 2017 strategic initiatives with uh, uh, this platform is that we're going to increase our measurements, right? We we want to add in. Um, additional layers for per, per class or per queue um, for quality of service, uh, per VLAN. Uh, we want to look at using Viavi's JMAP product to extend our, um, our polling capability or our performance monitoring capability. You'll see uh, in the next slide how many we have out there today and what part of our network we cover. We don't cover all 5,000 today. We, we kind of bring it more into like a core model. But we are looking at things like JMAP, which Michael McAllen from Viavi will go into to, to try to extend that even further. We want to reach further out to the customer to get as much performance uh, statistics as we possibly can. <clears throat> Excuse me. And then automation and SDN. Um, this is where, again, uh, Windstream's vision is, is that we, we are starting with trying to use, to, do, uh, to employ a SDN type uh, uh, technologies, if you will. Um, and that starts for us around automated alerting for customers so that the traditional model of, hey, I'm down and I call into a repair center, we want, we want the, the platform to help us alert our customers through their portal and in various other mechanisms. And then automated um, testing. We, there's an example here I'll show you um, with a product, there, one of the features that we have from Viavi where we are starting down that path where we want the customer to be able to come in and test their service proactively at any time without having to call a repair center um, and, and make changes if they need to to their service. And that's kind of where we're going with the SDN component. <coughs> and then customer portal, again, same, same kind of concept there. We want to push as much customer to, much data, excuse me, to the customer as we possibly can um, instead of them pulling uh, that data. We do have customer portal, we did have customer portals in place uh, prior to this deployment. Um, but again, uh, it was uh, disparate systems, a different experience based on legacy company and where the customer um, originated, and, and now we have unified it into a single, and we intend to grow that portal with even more information and more capabilities for our customer. Um, and then, uh, as I mentioned earlier, with the uh, JMAP increased visibility for more probes, um, <clears throat> this this allowed us to you know achieve our objectives. We we integrated our legacy networks. We, we got rid of some of these legacy performance monitoring systems. We simplified our network, again, not having four. Um, and, and then we, outdated, or we eliminated some outdated technologies. Many of you are probably familiar with certain vendors that have um, dedicated platforms. Uh, we got rid of all of that, and, and that was significant for us. And then uh, savings and reliability, the truck rolls were one of our largest savings, not having to, to roll a, someone in the field. Um, some of our challenges were, of course, like any company, lack of you know dedicated funding. People, if it didn't go right to the customer, uh, you know, adding capacity, it's tough to, to justify that. But but we were able to get beyond that. And then, of course, getting this all integrated into our back office systems like Metasolve and billing systems. Um, and then we had to consider some of our legacy products. So those were our challenges that we faced as well. So moving on. Um, this is just to give you a, a visual representation. This is the uh, Windstream IP MPLS backbone as it exists today. Uh, a little tough to read. It might be better when you, if you guys get the slides um, uh, later. But uh, primarily, what I'm trying to illustrate here is, you know, this is just what we call our Tier One, Tier Two, and Tier Three pops. Um, it is probably uh, right around 30 to 40 percent of our total. Uh, what you don't see is what we call tier fours or edge outs, and those are the router on the sticks. Um, and this is where the majority of the probes are today in these type of locations. Definitely tier one and tier two, and most of our tier threes. 
Um, but this is the complexity of the network. Um, again, this is our, our integrated network. We, we went for a, a, you know, our objective was to make it look like a greenfield build, um, even though we are a conglomeration of many companies. Uh, that was our intent. So this is what we're monitoring, performance measuring against today. Um, this is the network as it exists. <clears throat> so moving on to uh, uh, the actual solution from Viavi. Uh, Windstream made an investment over $2 million in, in this next-gen performance monitoring. We deployed over 80 probes uh, nationwide. Um, Michael will speak to what type those were. and. We, we have not yet deployed. You'll see um, small form factor things like JMEP, but we are looking at that. Um, you know, and again, you know, this was a centralized test platform. It's one place, any customer, any location. We broke down all the barriers of what legacy company the customer came from. Um, a, a reduction of truck rolls. I mentioned that already. Um, and who uses this? This is this is primarily our repair centers. Our first that's the first call a customer calls into. Um, and, and our service delivery organization when there's new service uh, uh, instantiation, um, birth certificate, and then of course the NOx use it, um, some of the performance monitoring to do event correlation. Uh, and then we in engineering use it of course as well. But it's a single unified tool. It doesn't matter where you're at in the company, you see the same thing um, regardless of your, uh, um, you know, where you sit in the, organ in the organization and operations or service delivery, they're all the same. It is based on, we do have some standardized testing, standardized testing that we do. Um, and again, this was all around just making sure that regardless if the customer is getting new service or they have a trouble, they're seeing the same, re same type of testing. And you can see there, it's pretty industry standard, you know, Y.1731, 1564, 2544. Um, we, we are using uh, TWAMP um, for the SLA reporting, uh, RFC standard. Um, and we're working on developing, as I mentioned, uh, you know, the API to export a lot of the data from the Viavi database, historical and other information that we get out of the system, you know, to pushing information to our customer portals and letting them know proactively, hey, we had a fiber cut here or something happened, um, so they're not, they're not having to call in and guess. And that, that's kind of where we're going. And again, you know, um, with TWAMP, it's a departure from some legacy methods. I've been doing this for 25 years and, you know, been around since the, the days of just pinging things, and that was all great and good. but. Uh, um, we, we, we started fresh with just building this entire thing on using T1. One of the other things that Michael's going to touch on that we have deployed, and this really moves again to our SDN type of vision that we have at Windstream, is, uh, is uh, Viavi TrueSpeed. And uh, that is really uh, what we consider um, at the edge of for us as, as for SDN type of uh, uh, technology. This is a customer self-service. Tool it does RFC 6349 TCP through application throughput testing. It allows a technician to build a test, send a link to the customer, um, and in the cloud, if you will, uh, and they they go and test, click on the link, run the test whenever at their convenience, and they get the test results. and And we're we're really keen on this when we get customers who really want to see some application performance testing and things like 1564, you know, aren't satisfying. Um, their, their desire to test the performance. So this is the next slide I'm going to uh, present to you is just the, uh, uh, the view, and it's a little bit, again, tough with the, the, the picture here, but um, this is publicly available. That's why I have the, the link up there. This is just like any other care, most carriers, I should say, that have something up there. Again, there's a lot of them having come from one of those large carriers. They're based on just your typical ping. This is based on TWAMP. Um, we think ours is, you know, pretty good with the map. You can go play with it right now while, while I'm speaking if you go to that URL. Um, took a screenshot, you know, uh, we obviously, you can, it's hard to see, but down in Tampa, one of our probes um, has been disconnected, so we're working on getting that fixed. But I, we purposely highlighted and hovered over a location so you can see how our, we have an interactive map that visually shows, um, you know, wh where the, the A and Z locs are. And then, of course, you get the pop-up dialog box there. But this is all performance monitoring that we've taken um, from Viavi um, with, the, with the deployment. And you can see the number of pops um, that we have there as well. And again, much better if you go there directly, uh, publicly available. And uh, this is how we deploy. This is a one view from the performance monitoring portion. 
My last slide um, is just again, what, are, what, are, what were the positive impacts of partnering with Viavi and, and this solution? And um, you know, we, we, from a network reliability perspective, we, we got automated diversity mapping tools out, uh, from this uh, exercise and this deployment. Um, things that we didn't have before, we had, we had much greater capability. Um, we got exception-based diversity reporting with some of the performance monitoring. Uh, diversity is very, very uh, large. Um, effort here at Windstream to make sure that our everything all the way down to our transport layer is diverse and this, this tool has been and, and this deployment has been very very um, helpful in providing um, some of that visibility that we didn't have quite before. Um, enhanced outage reporting again with, with some of this uh, <coughs> with, with this deployment excuse me. Uh, on the network data quality side again we got the unified view for our repair center ops and engineering and I can't harp on that enough everybody's using the same tool, the customers see the same thing in the portal, it's all coming from one data source, one data set. We've got the historical trends, which is great for our product teams, for SLAs, we all know that that's important for customers and, and, and it's important um, for us as well uh, to, to define and set those properly and this tool definitely helps with that and this deployment. Uh, and then again, unified measurement across all legacy companies. Operational efficiency, we were able to enhance and standardize our engineering KPIs um, with our operations partners uh, now that we had better visibility. Reduced truck rolls, um, uh, I want to just keep reiterating that, that was a large OPEX expense for us, um, significant, and, and we made a significant reduction there. Uh, standardized reporting uh, to our customers, um, and, uh, and again, better event correlation, uh, but whether that was a VoIP event going on and we saw latency on the IP network, um, you know, for whatever reason, or trans or fiber cut, and, and we saw latency there. So that cor that coordination and correlation um, increased significantly once we had this, once we completed this uh, this project and this deployment. And then, of course, the last is the capacity planning and project specific. Uh, having this greater visibility allowed us to to be better at capacity planning and looking at latency impacts. For example, on our VoIP network, um, and just looking at do we need to put in some different routes based on on latency and things like that. So, so those were the positive impacts and, and there were no negative impacts. Um, so that's why I just had the positive. Um, in summary, you know, we, we felt like Viavi was a, a great partner. Um, we believe that this sets us up to do even more, uh, as I mentioned, with the strategy side for SDN and, and completing Windstream's vision of, or I should say, you know, uh, progressing the Windstream's vision towards uh, further automation for service delivery, new service instantiation, and real-time uh, proactive uh, alerting for customers for issues, and then self-service type troubleshooting. So with that, I'll hand it uh, over to um, Michael McCallan from Viavi, and thank you very much. Thanks, Mike and Brian. I uh, appreciate the opportunity to uh, speak today. Um, I think the Avi and Windstream, as well as other customers, uh, collaborate uh, significantly on how we apply solutions to, you know, the real challenges uh, operators face. And, and Mike's described quite a few there, which I will go into some of the technology and how it applies and how it enables capability on the OSS side. So just just the baseline quickly on uh, the, the term, you know, assurance in the transport area and QoE. Um, and Mike referred to already, uh, key KPIs are latency loss and also uh, utilization is becoming more important. I'll talk more about that later. Um, but the main elements in an assurance solution are activation testing. So this is testing the service before you uh, turn it over uh, to the uh, customer. Uh, I sometimes refer to this as uh, pipe cleaning in the context of ensuring that all the configuration through that network for that service whether well, that's voice video data for that for that customer, um, ensuring that everything's been configured correctly. So there's all sorts of uh, buffering, queuing, shaping, policing that go on in the network. And it's actually testing that it works up to the committed information rate and beyond as far as the extended information rate. Um, and that, that is done at layer two, layer three. Uh, Mike also spoke about uh, true speed, uh, RC 6349, which is testing at layer four. We definitely see that there are issues that will happen in networks where the layer three testing will pass and the customer is complaining about layer four performance. So it's important to test layer four as well. 
And then performance monitoring is just basically monitoring 7x24 um, that uh, the performance is performing as expected, whether that's an external SLA to a customer or potentially an internal SLA between groups. Um, and this, again, is checking for latency, loss, and jitter. Um, and then troubleshooting. So uh, typically, and you, you have issues in networks, and Mike showed you his screen, and, and there are issues occurring, uh, whether it's a fiber cut or a uh, performance congestion issue in the network. You need methods to uh, debug those services. Many times, uh, operators will go back in a maintenance window and repeat testing if they're looking for a specific performance issue. Clearly, if it's a, a, a fiber cut, you know, they will, they will dispatch uh, after quickly isolating it. Okay. Advanced operators, uh, such as Windstream, they've integrated the, their test OSS capability into their OSS. So it's, it's a seamless integration. Um, it's used 7 by 24 uh, by operators like uh, Windstream, and it gives them real-time visibility to service performance. So it's not a tell me how my network was working, it's tell me how my network's performing now. Um, and if we look at the technology, the OSS capability, and the supporting have devices have improved to support all the elements of assurance. So activation, monitoring, troubleshooting. So it is a single platform that's available uh, today to operators, as Mike's alluded to. Um, it's also um, the concept of test goes beyond what we thought of as test that it works to actually test and monitor. So those are effectively combined today. If we look at the, the challenges, uh, and Mike hit on several of these, um, so the end customers demand, actually, they're asking for improved performance on their latency-sensitive uh, applications and services. And for all of us on this call today, we're, we're, we're clearly uh, users of those services, whether that's uh, when we're, uh, we're at home residentially, uh, on, our, on, our, on our cell devices, wireless, or, or at work. We're all putting demands on the network, and we're expecting our latency-sensitive applications to, to work all the time, regardless of where we are. Um, visibility to bursting, and bursting is inherent uh, characteristic of Ethernet networks. Um, and a lot of the performance monitoring capability applied in the Ethernet networks today was derived from the TDM technology, so five-minute, 15-minute reporting. And that type of reporting on utilization doesn't actually show you what's actually happening down at the micro, microsecond and millisecond level, which I'll talk more about. Uh, virtualization to enable maximizing deployment options and eliminating stranded hardware. Uh, SDN networks, uh, Mike spoke about earlier, are more dynamic. And between the virtualization, which is an enabler for the, uh, the SDN control, it's driving a need for actually improved test and monitoring capability. I'll talk more about that. Complexity is increasing, uh, driving a requirement for more monitoring and test endpoints. And for all the operators, such as Windstream, Increasing the revenue per user while reducing the cost per user is important. If we look at today, most networks, you know, their standard process to collect and record on data, such as for an, an SLA report. Um, if you look at what's being put in place today, uh, analytics, real-time analytics, real-time dashboards showing you what's going on in the moment. Uh, Mike talked about that and explained the, uh, the matrix that Windstream uses for performance management. And then, we see migration to actual insight, uh, which is providing the operator not just a report on what went wrong, but actually indicating what, what action should be taken and correlating amongst the core, uh, the backhaul, and the access area of the networks. Okay, network complexity. So I spoke earlier that it's increasing. Um, the number of, uh, of segments in networks is increasing. Networks are expanding. Uh, virtualization and SDN is going to cause changes in traffic patterns in the network. Um, so the ability to be able to test at all the different types of access points in a network, whether that be a wireline or wireless, um, monitoring uh, all of those points in the network to identify where those issues are, and of course, you need to see this uh, centrally, right? So, so you can automate it, um, you can monitor it centrally, as Mike spoke about, and you can get visibility into what's going on in that network, which actually facilitates uh, planning for that network. 
Um, if we look at the techniques being used in the networks today, uh, there are there are test heads uh, such as our QT600 uh, that will drive a high amount of traffic uh, in the core of the network, which Mike referred to, and in the, the Windstream application, which I'll talk about shortly. That's that's a mesh. Can also be used to drive testing out to the uh, access points in a network, and it gives an operator a ubiquitous uh, solution, which allows them to take a, a single device that they standardize on uh, with a feature set and use it throughout the network. Um, want the ability in a, in, a, in a centralized NOC to be able to instantly see uh, issues that are occurring and to be able to diagnose them very quickly. That's important. You want to be able to automate your workflows and processes. QoE is key. Everything's driven around the quality of experience for the customer. And there are typically multiple customers in a, in a core network for sure. Um, but definitely the focus is on ensuring the experience of that customer is as best as it can be, monitoring and seeing what's happening with the customer. And Mike and I have spoken several times about you really want the operator to know about the issue and be correcting it before the customer detects it, right? The, the, it's not ideal to have customers calling you to tell you there's a problem with your network. You would want to have identified it beforehand and proactively actually made them aware uh, that you've detected an issue and you're resolving it and then make them aware when you resolve it. Um, the more an operator, such as Windstream, is exposed to their customer's QoE, the better solution they can offer their customers. Um, so if we look at business services, and, and, and in this case, a core network mesh monitoring, and we look at the technology that's been applied, so effectively at, at the uh, core uh, elements in the, in the Windstream network, uh, the QT610 was deployed. This provided capability to do that activation testing, which I referred to earlier, um, and a multi-service. So everything that's done today is multi-service. You need to be able to test when you're running an activation test all the services in parallel, so voice, video, data, and if it was wireless, 2G, 3G, 4G. Be able to run tests at the same time, so you're exercising the network to its maximum capability. And then you need to be able to monitor as well, and that monitoring is 7 by 24, and as, as Mike's indicated, uh, Windstream is true for many operators around the world. They're using uh, a Layer 3 monitoring application called uh, t uh, which is RFC 5357, and that provides them 24 by 7 monitoring of uh, loss, uh, latency, and jitter. Uh, latency is very key in networks. I spoke earlier about latency-sensitive applications. Uh, all of our voice applications are that, uh, conversational video. Uh, latency is very important in networks. And of course, in the network engineering context, changes made to improve latency uh, can have effect on, on loss as well. So there's always a trade-off being made in that network engineering between latency and loss. End-to-end, um, -end, you've got KPIs uh, for that network, um, as well as one-way measurements. And we're seeing a lot, a lot more one-way uh, measurement technology being applied in networks because there are um, the networks are not always symmetrical. Um, multiple cascaded threshold levels, so the ability to be able to trigger whether it's a minor issue, major critical, or an SLA violation quickly. So the extent of the performance degradation that's occurring can instantly be communicated uh, to the operator. Uh, with the intent of eliminating SLA violations and retention. As you can see from this picture here, this network's constantly being tested and monitored. We're feeding live data uh, to the, uh, the dashboard uh, of Windstream that not only do they see, but their customers see. So everyone effectively in the, in the quality experience chain is being provided the same information in real time. So that gives a, a good view of the network and how it's performing. Um, and it's a common platform, as Mike spoke about, for activation tests, performance monitoring, troubleshooting. Really important that the, it's a common platform. But historically, there were many different platforms that got used, some for testing, some for monitoring, some for troubleshooting. Bringing them together becomes really important. I'll talk later about SDN. SDN will drive that requirement even further. Okay, I'm now going to talk about advanced capability. Uh, that's available today and being used um, in, in a variety of networks. I'll talk about smart SFPs, uh, microburst uh, monitoring capability, uh, segmentation testing and monitoring, uh, edge traffic generation, 
live traffic monitoring, and I'll talk about true speed and the importance of testing at layer four. So when we talk about smart SFP, so this is this has been developing over the past several years. It's now becoming pretty common uh, in operators' networks, and there are a variety of different technologies out there. I'll speak about the ones that apply in the the Ethernet the Ethernet area of networks, um, and their their intent is to give a ubiquitous vendor agnostic solution and effectively our white box enabler so that you can take your white boxes and plug in your OANM feature set through an SFP. It obviously gives you the same capability uh, throughout your network, uh, regardless of the different vendors that may participate in your network or their different software releases. Um, in effect, we virtualize boxes and applications is the objective, right? So when you look at virtualization and, and NFE, uh, as well as SDN, uh, one of the uh, tenants of those initiatives is to eliminate stranded hardware. So by taking functionality that required boxes, which required footprint, planning, power, et cetera, and putting them into a, an SFP, you've reduced, and the SFPs are being deployed anyhow, you've reduced CapEx and, and noticeably OpEx. You've improved reliability by eliminating points of failure in the network, and you've eliminated as well the stranded capacity as referred to. And we've done some modeling that it says that compar comparative to a box, a smart SFP, you know, can save you several hundred dollars uh, over uh, three to five years. Uh, on demand, so with the smart SFP technology of the on-demand ability to initiate tests, to do performance monitoring, uh, troubleshoot, and segmentation. I'll talk more about segmentation uh, on the follow-on chart. Uh, smart dispatch. Uh, Mike, Mike talked a lot about truck rolls, technician dispatch effectively. Uh, we believe in smart dispatching. So the first set of tests and diagnostics that need to be run in a, in a network or on a service, um, do that from a central point. Uh, the smart SFPs enable that uh, to be done very cost effectively wherever in the network as well as our, our test probes like the QT600. Um, the objective here is deploy technicians to fix issues, not to find them. Um, accelerated uh, problem resolution, uh, improving how long uh, shortening, I should say, how long it takes to find issues. So believe in mean time innocence. Uh, most problems in networks today are complex. Uh, they take quite a bit of time to resolve. Um, you want to be able to find them quickly, wh whether it's your problem or your potentially your customer's problem, you want to isolate it quickly. So mean time to innocence. And that's a change from years ago where mean time to repair with the assumption that there's something that was broken. It's really now not really broken. It's trying to isolate what the cause of that issue is. Um, increasing visibility to what's actually happening in the network. Effectively, you can economically instrument the networks and provide that type of visibility with this capability of Smart SFP. Uh, applies to uh, multiple uh, applications, uh, troubleshooting of applications and networks, as well as traffic engineering issues that can be used for that technology. Uh, in backhaul networks, whether it's mobility or um, wireline, of course, business services the core, and potentially the core network, uh, cloud-based services um, where there really isn't uh, much of a point of presence potentially on the customer side, the smart SFP can apply there. So we've used this technology to increase the visibility in networks, specifically around the edge and access side of the network. Segmentation. So the, the interesting thing that goes on in networks today um, is people are able to, operators are, like Windstream are able to identify there's a problem between point A and point Z, but you may not be able to know where it is in that network. Um, so segmentation is basically instrumenting, uh, conceptually view it as every hop. I think it gets, it gets driven in application by uh, economics. But conceptually, you can instrument uh, every hop in the network um, and with smart SFPs and be able to do measurements. So, and you don't have to add additional tests to do this. You can run tests from A to Z, and the devices in the middle will monitor for the, that test traffic and make measurements. It also provides the ability to troubleshoot uh, because there's deep packet inspection capability in the smart SFP. So you can isolate, you have a problem. It could be microbursting as an example. It could be uh, traffic is not routing as was expected. So you could have a, um, a 
traffic management issue. And what I'm referring to here is priority bits uh, could be adjusted, uh, adjusted uh, unexpectedly at a certain part of the network. And of course, the, uh, the, the shaping uh, policing rules uh, are being kicked in. Um, so you need the ability to, to troubleshoot at that layer because you want to do everything centrally, as, as Mike spoke about earlier and I've spoken about. From your NOC, you want to be able to see your network, identify issues in your network, in this case, segment them, and then work to re improve the, uh, the, the service uh, recovery time. Uh, microbursting, which I've mentioned a couple times now. Um, so microbursting is effectively what's actually happening at the Ethernet layer, uh, down at the uh, you know, layer one layer of the protocol. Ethernet will transmit whenever it has data as quickly as it can transmit. So while we tend to think of a service as you know, 10 megabits, let's say 100 megabits as an example, um, we're not actually getting a nice chunk of 100 megabit per second traffic through a network. The, the traffic's going up and down. Uh, there's oversubscription for cost-effective reasons. But what's reported in the, the systems today, and I had mentioned earlier, that a fair bit of the technology today is derived from TDM. Uh, in a TDM network, um, you're, you're given an average throughput, uh, such as five, you know, a five-minute report. So in, in this diagram here, if you look at the uh, green line in the top left of the chart, it says you know, the, the average throughput is in the, in the 20s, right? 20, 25 megabits. Um, but what's actually happening on that, that service at certain time frames, um, and I uh, not to find anything specific, but let's assume this is a second as an example. The traffic you know, is, is down at you know, 8 megabits up to 140, goes up and down consistently. And this is what, what the bursting is, and this is what creates issues in the back of the network on prioritizing and scheduling and queuing uh, that traffic. And for all of us, all of us are uh, guilty of creating microverse and network because every time we turn our devices on, whether it's at our, at our desk or our phone, and we start to watch a video, um, join a WebEx session, et cetera, there is now we've created a demand of traffic that generates in that network. So what we've done is put the ability in our smart SFPs to actually monitor down to a one millisecond level the throughput. So you can know now how many milliseconds you're at giggy or how many milliseconds you're at 10 meg. So it gives another uh, set of data and information to the operator to understand the behavior of the traffic and the experience the customer's having on that service or on that part of the network. And also heat map, right? So the ability to see over a 24 hour period for that service. And when I say service here, I'm referring to could be an IP flow, could be an IP flow and a DSCP bit, it could be a VLAN, et cetera, whatever has been defined as a service by the operator is being monitored. And you can tell. So when a customer calls you up, uh, you know, a day later saying, yesterday I, was, I had a video conference call set up and it dropped two times, you can actually go and look and hover over that, that time frame and see where there is an issue and then do a drill down and see, yeah, there was a tremendous amount of bursting going on in the network and now you need now you know what to go look at in your network, which is to deal with that type of bursting and make changes to the traffic manager. One of the uh, uh, the other capabilities that the smart SFPs uh, have incorporated is the ability to generate multi service or multi stream traffic. Uh, essential in a business service environment. We're also seeing it becoming more important in the 4G and 5G networks. So this is the ability to generate an activation test, uh, multi-service, so voice, video, data, or 2G, 3G, 4G at the same time, uh, and perform uh, a measurement from any two points in the network. And this complements the, the test probe. So now from the access side, you can test back to the probes. You can test from an access point to an access point. Um, and you can monitor your, your jitter latency and loss. It also does uh, PM, the PM application, so it can performance monitor. So you have 7 by 24 monitoring of your throughput, which will include uh, microbursting as well. So now in a, in a small SFP, now you can do everything you could do in a box. It's ubiquitous. It can deploy anywhere. And it'll enable both the activation test and performance monitoring in networks. And it's, it's also a demarcation device 
So you have the ability to do VLAN tagging and other demarcation features. Real-time at your fingertips. I spoke about this earlier. And you, and you can see from the, uh, the Windstream dashboard that they have information uh, every few minutes being updated. Um, we have the same thing in our system here. Um, one of the things we've incorporated, though, is being able to provide executive reports. So you have the ability, so if you look on the top right, you have the ability to actually see on your, you know, using an email system or whatever distribution, you can actually get the report sent to you. So an executive can do drill down and don't need to be logged into a, a database to see the information. And it's, you know, look at it on their iPad, on their phone, et cetera. Um, and also, um, being able to monitor in real time. So if you look in the bottom left corner, uh, what that is, a real time monitor um, that we set up for performance monitoring. In this case, it's a TWAMP application, such as what uh, Windstream's using in their network. This gives you an ability to, with the customer on the phone that's complaining and, and you don't want to wait for the, you know, the next uh, standard five minute report, gives the ability to actually monitor in the moment uh, that, that those services that the customer is complaining about and actually seeing, you know, down you know, in the, in the, in the small second level, um, what's actually happening on that service in the moment in time. So in the previous slide I showed you about, you know, most utilization, most utilization today is reported in uh, five minute reports and there's microbursting occurring. We can actually show that traffic profile as it's happening to help give the operator an indication of, of why the customer's experience is not what was intended. Um, Mike also spoke about uh, in the evolution of moving forward, and I've spoken about layer four is true speed. Uh, so it's a standard based uh, uh, capability set um, that allows you to test at the uh, layer four. And when I say layer four here, I'm saying at the TCP layer, but in effect, you're, you're simulating the applications above, right? So all the way up to layer seven. And you set up those tests um, to give you uh, closer measurement of the experience level of the applications that the users experience. So it enables you to identify issues like fragmentation, so it helps identify the, the max MTU to use in your network uh, that has the least amount of fragmentation. It, it measures, of course, the latency that's happening at the TCP layer. Um, it does window sizing, um, and it also does throughput. Um, so we see a number of operators using this, such as Windstream, uh, to help pipe clean their network at the layer four. Okay. This will also help pick up, um, uh, when you actually run the TCP test, you can actually tell uh, when you run true speed, if you're going through shapers and policers, you can actually tell by the test results, uh, the profile of traffic, um, what type of uh, traffic management is being deployed. And I'm now going to uh, finalize here and just talk about some emerging requirements quickly. Um, so first is SDN. Uh, Mike, Mike spoke about that. Uh, from an assurance perspective, um, SDN is going to add some more advanced capability, especially around the OSS. From, uh, from the test and monitoring in the network, um, we see that the networks will be hybrid. There's investments that have been made in test probes and smart SFPs. And basically, the VNF adds another instrumentation technique that can be a little more prolific um, and can be deployed anywhere a VM infrastructure is, is being deployed. Um, it will allow for um, some a much more flexibility northbound from the system. So uh, pretty standard in, in SDN as a netconf yang type interface. Uh, a number of operators are implementing uh, some of their some more advanced assurance capability as they get access to this measurement technology. Um, you, it continues to evolve that you have distributed test and monitoring points increasing in the network the ability to deploy and troubleshoot. So the one thing that SDN will much easier enable is if you want to run a test at this part of the network, you can deploy that application, run a test, and then redeploy it to another set of the, another side of the network. Of course, performance monitoring is 7 by 24, so those applications will always be running, uh, whether they're in a VNF or in a pro. And for troubleshooting, though, troubleshooting tends to be an in the moment. They need to troubleshoot something, so the ability with SDN to uh, download a troubleshooting application to troubleshoot a problem that customers experience in the more in, in that moment. And of course, 
you have the service orchestration layer above and the DNF infrastructure orchestration that the systems will uh, uh, plug into. Customer portals, Mike, Michael's referred to that. Um, so it gives a, a common QoE touch point uh, for the customer and the operator. Um, and customers are actually able to execute tests themselves, so that will reduce some burden on the operation side of an operator. It also gives the customer uh, a comfort level that and helps them isolate issues that may be on their side of the net network uh, versus the operators. Um, when there's issues, both the customer and the operator are notified in real time. Capacity expansion requests, you know, ordering an additional uh, expansion of service can be done there. And of course, any SLA reporting of the customer can be provided in that portal. And the last topic I'll uh, touch on briefly is 5G. Uh, with the introduction of 5G, um, latency is becoming even more important in these networks. Um, I've noted there are some of the uh, latency requirements uh, as you break down at layer two, layer three, down to layer one. And layer one, you know, you see numbers like, uh, you know, 100 microseconds um, and time-sensitive networking. Uh, no doubt there are a lot of changes that are going on for 5G, but it's clear from the architectures and the virtualization that's occurring that the predictive latency is, is essential in these networks. And so the ability to test and monitor and troubleshoot a 5G network is, is important, and I would say more important than it was in 4G and 3G. And with that, I'll... Uh, Turn it back to uh, Brian for any questions. Thank you, Mike, and thank you, Michael. Um, we, as anticipated, we do have a little bit of time for questions and answers. If you have a question, you're you, you're uh, you're welcome to enter it now. Uh, there's a little Q and A button along the bottom of your screen. Uh, type it in, and we'll get to them as best we can. Uh, one of the first questions that has come up is for Mike at Windstream, and uh, the question is whether the solution is deployed uh, for all of your customers, uh, enterprise, uh, small and medium business, um, and residential. Yeah, thanks, Brian. Yeah, great question. Sorry, I should have I should have uh, uh, made that clear during my presentation. Actually, so we have three business units at Windstream, Carrier, Enterprise, um, Consumer, Small, Medium Business, and, and absolutely, they all leverage the same IP network, um, and we have probes, again, based on the tier level, so um, Carrier overlaps very much with, uh, with Enterprise, but when we talk about residential, where we have um, typically what would be considered like BNGs or BRASs serving our DSL, or where we have CMTSs out there serving our cable plants, we do have some of those in the country, we absolutely have probes out there in those locations and they look just like another pop. Um, and it may be in our ILEC territory. Um, so the, the example I'll give is, you know, Chicago obviously um, is not an ILEC territory for us, we're a CLEC. Um, we have probes there. And then of course, when you go out to um, some place like Fitzgerald, Georgia, where we're the ILEC and that's our large DSL, um, it, it's just gonna be another pop and you'll see Fitzgerald, Georgia on there and that's why you'll see cities like that which aren't your typical what I what we call NFL cities. So yes, absolutely covers the IP network end to end. Now that we have one fully integrated uh, IP network, thank you for the question. So uh, you've mentioned giving customers the capability to to test their own services um, on the on the uh, business side. Does that have any ramifications uh, when you're thinking about fulfilling the requirements of SLAs? <clears throat> Absolutely. Um, you know, one of the things that, as again, I mentioned earlier, we were a conglomeration of many different companies all having their own different SLAs. And as we've rationalized those, um, and, and then we have now the performance, uh, unified performance measuring and monitoring to basically let us de redefine those then as, we're, as customers are testing, we can absolutely, and the intent is, is to say this is the SLA for that service and they're gonna test against that SLA um, and that will, that will drive or determine, right, how much further we wanna take, um, um, you know, the troubleshooting further into Windstream's repair centers, et cetera. If we're meeting the SLA, for example, Brian, in that example, right, we, we wanna kinda 
uh, make sure that we're giving the customer all that information and letting them know that, hey, your service is within the SLA and, you know, you can take it this further, but, uh, you know, not necessarily do you need to. So we are definitely thinking on all those terms and how we're wrapping all that together to give the customer that view of um, here's how your service performed, here's what your SLA was, et cetera. So. Excellent. Thank you. Uh, Michael, um, I'd like to, to send the question your way. Uh, what do you recommend that, operate, that operators uh, focus on uh, to improve their OSS capability? And perhaps part of the question ought to be, uh, what do you recommend operators focus on to prepare uh, for doing the types of things we're talking about doing today? Thank, thanks, Brian. That's an excellent question. Um, so so the, the first thing I would respond with is the ability to test and monitor as many points in your network as possible is, is a key capability set. Um, you want to combine the PM and test and not treat them as two things because effectively the performance monitoring is a, is a, a small active type test. It's not, it's not completely passive. You're actually sending uh, test packets into the network. Uh, segmentation is becoming more important, so um, look at segmentation. Don't look at just the end-to-end. -end. Look at the ability to look in the middle um, so you can isolate issues quickly that will occur in the networks. And, and SDN, I see SDN as it will drive the change in the networks. It's going to bring both flexibility, uh, the ability to start and stop applications and deploy services a lot quicker, uh, and it actually does, it's an enabler to increase the monitoring points. Thank you. So, so Mike uh, from Windstream, I'd like to a ask you uh, kind of a variation on the same on the same question. When you first started talking with with Viavi, uh, were there um, things that um, that you needed to do uh, with your network to prepare for 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 implementing some of the measures you wanted to implement? Um, not, not really. I mean, uh, we obviously capacity plan um, for for uh, our customers, so having ports available. Um, I, I really, the only the only uh, work that we need to prepare, Brian, was to make sure you know identify sites that would get, for example, the one gig probes versus the ten gig probes, um, and just plan that out. And uh, based on capacity planning, we knew we had the ports, and then getting the install done. So there really wasn't much from from that physical. Deployment. All of the preparation for us was really around just understanding how we were going, to, what we were going to do with all the data, the new data that we were going to get. But from a network perspective, didn't have to do anything. Just had to plug it in and and uh, and get the the you know the centralized server stood up in, in, in our uh, internal uh, data centers as we call that. But the actual IP network, nothing had to be done at all other than plug it in. Uh, that, that might be true, but it sounds like you did a little bit of, uh, as far, and that might be true in terms of, of preparing your network. It mm -hmm. also sounds, though, as, as if you did a lot of planning in terms of your goals and, and uh, you know, the, the list of things you wanted to accomplish. It seems like, uh, uh, you know, in just about anything, um, you know, thinking before you do seems like a good thing, um, and it sounds like Windstream actually did that. Yeah, that's a. I mean, a, as an engineer, that's an engineering tenet, right? That we have, uh, and we and we follow that, you know, very very uh, closely here at Windstream. But no, that was really we wanted to understand what we're replacing, what's going away, you know, what the impacts were again to all the repair centers, to the to the field from a, um, you know, the the uh, customer call out, et cetera, et cetera, truck rolls as I call them. Um, and it, so we we really under wanted to understand all of that. You know how we were going to, you know, present this. We, we frankly, uh, Windstream, we didn't have a what we call a delay matrix or something that's been out there for you know 10, 15, 20 years that that other companies have had. Um, so we really gave a lot of thought into what that's going to look like, and then again, a lot of thought into how this was going to feed our, our our portal and how this fits into our our overall long-term SDN uh, vision and plan. Um, and uh, and. You know, again, that was where the significant amount of time um, and effort was placed. You're exactly right. Uh, excellent. 
So um, you talked about how uh, there's a single view across engineering, across operations, across repair. Uh, you talked about how there's a, a, a significant uh, reduction in truck rolls. Um, can I ask you to, to uh, uh, talk about what that's meant for customer service? I mean, from the engineer, I mean, these are all benefits from, uh, you know, Windstream's point of view. Um, but but how that, what was the fallout from the customer service side? Um, I wouldn't actually say it's fallout. It was it was it's been met with um, with uh, great success. I, I, again, if you can envision. Uh, you're a customer of Windstream, but you were originally a customer of some legacy company that we acquired. Many people know we acquired, you know, Paytech and things like that. So, you know, depending on w where you bought your service, um, and, and a lot of our customers could be straddling many different um, uh, legacy companies that they came into us with from, excuse me. Um, so we take a, a large um, company that has 2,500 sites, some of those sites may have come in from one legacy company and some from another. Their experience was, depending on which site they called from, they got different type of information, uh, different uh, different performance monitoring. Um, it, it was very, very, um, you know, disjointed and, and felt, you know, like separate companies. So, you know, the positive gain for the customer here now is with all of that going away, it doesn't matter where they come from. It doesn't matter what products they're buying on the IP network, um, whether it's security-based or, or VoIP, et cetera. They now get this uh, uh, unified single view. And if they're talking to a repair center or they're talking to service delivery, if you can envision a customer that you know had, had service turned up and then they're talking to a repair center, their previous experience would have been you know, different measurements and different information provided, it's now off a single, it looks the same. So the service gets turned up, they get a Viavi report on, you know, 1564, 2544 saying you ordered 10 meg service, here's our, here's the, uh, you know, birth certificate as we call it, uh, service instantiation, and then if in, you know, four weeks later they have some issue, um, then they call, you know, they today again uh, moving towards the portal, but they call into the repair center and they're going to get the same view of information that looks, you know, exactly the same as what they received from the service delivery perspective. So those are the real, those are some of the benefits. The internal benefits, as we mentioned, right, they were, they were significant around savings, but that's where we see that the initial benefits for the customer, having higher visibility with this public tool that we have, and then again moving towards, um, and this is all about the customer for us, right? This is there were some benefits to Windstream, of course, but our main our main focus was about much more increased visibility of our network to our customer, and we believe we provided that, and it's going to continue to grow as we move more and more data out to the customer um, through the portals and, and through automation and SDN. Excellent. Uh, so we've gone past the hour. Our uh, speakers have, uh, have uh, consented to stick on for just a couple more minutes to get the the last couple of questions in. Um, we wanted to, one of the questions that came in is, is about support of 10 gig. Um, um, uh, Michael from Viavi, yeah. would you like to, to um, respond to that? Yeah, uh, good question. Yeah, yeah, we support uh, 10 gig in the, in the, on a pro perspective, that's actually what uh, Mike predominantly is using in the Windstream network. And also on our uh, smart SFP technology, we announced in uh, in February uh, availability of 10 gig technology there as well. Yeah, so 10 gig I'd say is pretty standard today in the insurance market. Very good. Um, I want to thank both of our speakers today, uh, Mike Hoyt and Michael McCallan. Um, on the screen, you should see a link for a survey. So if uh, you uh, came in. Uh, liked this uh, uh, webcast, please uh, please uh, go ahead, take a look at that. Uh, just a few questions, and we'd be grateful for that. Um, I'd like to thank our, uh, as I said, I'd like to thank our our, um, our guests, Mike and Michael uh, Viavi, for sponsoring this webinar. Uh, this presentation will be archived at Light Reading at uh, a URL you'll, you'll see on your screens earlier. Um, it's uh, www.lightreading.com if you'd like to listen again or if you'd like to invite a colleague to review it. Uh, thanks once again for joining us today, and have a good day. This concludes our webinar.